This is the third iteration of the Marin San Quentin that I have had the privilege of riding. And during that time, one thing I've learned is that Marin really knows how to listen to their customers. For instance, when they released this updated frame earlier this year, it was still only available with 27.5 inch wheels. And there are a lot of riders who were a little disappointed by that. But Marin heard their cry and just about a month ago, Marin quietly released this 29 inch version of the Marin San Quentin. And while on paper, it may appear that this bike is taking a step back from its dirt jumping roots, I can assure you that it is still every bit as playful. As with any bike, much of the San Quentin's character comes from this frame, which is almost identical to the 27.5 inch version. Both bikes have a super slack 64 degree head tube angle, a long reach, high stack, and steep and low seat tube. More specifically, the large model I've been riding has a wheelbase of 1,236 millimeters, a 470 millimeter reach, 645 millimeter stack height, and a 410 millimeter seat tube length. That makes it one of the shortest seat tubes on the market, and I really appreciate that. Makes it easier to do silly jibs as well as bail out of sketchy situations on a trail ride. Woo! Low top tube helps. <laughs> The bike also features 430 millimeter chainstays. That's five millimeters longer than what's on the 27.5 inch model. And I was a little worried that by stretching out that rear end, it would lose some of the willingness to bring that front wheel up and make it a little less poppy and playful. But to be honest, I haven't noticed that at all. Next up, the relatively short reach combined with a super steep 77 degree seat tube angle makes this bike feel pretty small, especially while seated. For reference, it has a 619 millimeter effective top tube length on this size large. That's the exact same length as the top tube on a size medium specialized fuse. So if you're looking to get a San Quentin and maybe size it down to be that much more agile and playful and kind of a dirt jump bike, then it's gonna feel really cramped while climbing. That said, if you wanna kind of lean more into the downhill descending capabilities of the bike and stretch it out and size up, then you're not gonna feel too hunched over while in that seated climbing position. In total, I think Marin's approach of elongating this bike just enough to fit those 29 inch wheels really speaks to their goal of making this bike just as capable at a skate park as it is on an enduro trail, for better and for worse. The bike's slack head tube angle and large wheels are at a bit of a juxtaposition with the short chainstays and low slung frame. And I'll talk about how this feels on the trail later on. So while there are more playful hardtails and hardtails better suit for hard enduro riding than this bike, I think the geometry here does play into its strength of being very well rounded. And speaking of enduro trails, one thing you'll notice should you ever throw a leg over one of these San Quentins is that the frame is far from supple. You definitely feel every inch of that trail you're going over. The frame also features internal cable routing, ISCG tabs, and what's in my opinion, a pretty sweet looking paint job, albeit relatively thin. I'm actually already starting to wear down the paint on the bottom of the down tube from carrying it around on my tailgate pack. Lastly, my size large weighs in at 32.8 pounds, which is not exactly light, but also not unheard of for these more aggressive hardtails. And I honestly think you could get it under 30 pounds pretty easily with some lighter wheels and tires. Moving on then to the part spec. And I wanna start by saying that at just $1,799, the 29 inch Marin San Quentin 3 is a killer value. Starting at the front of the bike, it's got a Marzocchi Bomber Z2 fork. This is essentially the same as a Fox 34 rhythm and it's a great fork, but felt a bit undergunned for a larger rider like myself. I rode a Fox 36 on my previous 27.5 inch San Quentin that I molded and that felt a bit more up to the task, especially considering the extremely aggressive 2.5 inch Maxxis Asagai tires the bike comes with. To be honest, I am not at all a fan of these tires. I think a hardtail should feel kind of fast and zippy and explosive, and those tires are anything but. I think a more moderate pair of Minions or even Dissectors would be a better option for this bike, and if I were to own this bike, it would be one of the first things that I would switch. The second thing I would switch is the dropper seat post, which is just 175 millimeters long. What that means is that you're not gonna be able to maximize that low seat tube. And with that being such a low straight seat tube, you could probably fit a 200 or 220 millimeter post on there. One part I would not replace, however, is this Shimano Dior drivetrain, which was actually a winner in our recent Shimano drivetrain shootout. If you haven't seen that video yet, I'll link it somewhere up here so you can watch it when we're done. 
It's also worth noting that Marin's website does say that this bike should come with a Sunrace cassette, but mine actually came shipped with a Dior cassette that has that same Hyperglide Plus machining, and my shifts were super smooth the entire time I was testing. And that's saying something, because I really did put this bike through a lot of abuse. And speaking of abuse, I did warp the OEM Marin rim pretty good after getting a little overzealous on a whip, and while my local bike shop was able to straighten the wheel, the tire sidewall has been deformed ever since. Lastly, the Marin San Quentin comes with some four-piston TRP brakes with a 203mm rotor in the front and a 180mm rotor in the back. I've been pretty impressed by their performance. Braking has been relatively strong, but very consistent, and the drilled slate levers looked and felt higher quality than their price would suggest. If I were to be keeping this bike, I would likely swap out the resin rotors that they came with with some metallic ones to get just a bit more braking bite, but otherwise have no complaints. And that sentiment of no complaints really is how I would sum up the part spec on this San Quentin. It's a great value for just $1,800, and I think thoroughly matches the quality and intention of the frame. Now on to how the bike performs on the trail. And let's start off with everybody's favorite part of a mountain bike ride, the climb. One of my biggest complaints with the 27.5 inch version of this bike was the frequent pedal strikes, which I'm thankful to say have been cured by swapping to 29 inch wheels. Those bigger wheels were also appreciated on techier climbs. And speaking of tight techie sections of trail, the bike felt surprisingly nimble given its slack head tube angle and relatively long wheelbase. The biggest thing holding the San Quentin back on the climbs are those Asagai tires, whose heavy weight and deep tread pattern made anything more than a slow drag feel super tiring. In conclusion, the San Quentin will definitely get you up the mountain, but it's not designed to do so quickly. So let's move on to where this bike really shines, and that's in the descents. The first thing I noticed while descending on the San Quentin was just how confidence inspiring the combination of a 64 degree head tube angle and 29 inch wheels really is, even on a hardtail. Be it through fast rock gardens or slow janky corners, both wheels just kept trucking. And it was a similar story on the flowier sections of the trail as well. The bike still felt every bit as nimble and poppy as its 27.5 inch counterpart. Jumping the bike was intuitive too, and that low seat tube made that you could throw the bike around without inhibition. As you'd probably imagine, those Asagai tires hooked up great in the corners, but sucked up a bit of speed through smoother sections of trail. As I mentioned earlier, the Bomber Z2 felt a bit flexy on some of the bigger hits and G-outs, but I'd guess a smaller rider wouldn't have the same issue. In total, I found the 29-inch version of this bike to be just as fun on the flowy, jumpy sections of trail as its 27.5-inch counterpart, but a lot more capable when things started to get techy. The last thing I want to talk about is jumping, and if you don't know already, the San Quentin is co-designed by Matt Jones, who's a professional slope style rider. As such, the bike's jumping prowess has been a huge focus in its marketing material ever since its onset. To be honest, as a recovering BMX addict, I've always had a bit of a bias towards smaller 27.5 inch wheels, and I was worried that these new 29 inch wheels might feel a bit bucky or weird on steeper lip jumps or at the skate park, but I was happily surprised. Adding to the ease of whipping and tabling the bike is the low seat tube, so you'll never need to worry about getting your saddle caught behind your knee again. That said, it's still far from a dedicated dirt jump bike, most notably with that super slack front end. That's gonna make doing tricks like 180s or 360s a little bit more difficult and can feel pretty stretched out when carving tight pump track corners or playing around in a skate park. Speaking of pump tracks and skate parks, this was another place where I really felt the drag of those Asagai tires, and I found myself having to pump extra hard or squeeze in a couple pedals in areas where I don't usually need to. So just as in descending, the San Quentin is a very formidable dirt jump bike, and to be honest, its only weaknesses here are the same things that give it strengths in other areas. Like I've said throughout this video, this bike is very versatile, and that means it could be good for a lot of different riders. But there's two in particular that stand out to me as being a perfect fit for the San Quentin. The first is a young or young at heart rider coming from BMX and getting their first mountain bike. I think those riders will appreciate the fact that this is a tough but responsive bike that can be ridden hard just about anywhere. Next, I think the San Quentin would be a great addition to a more experienced rider who already has a full suspension trail or enduro bike, but is looking to spice things up a little bit on their local trails. These riders will feel right at home on the aggressive geometry and mid-range part spec that the bike has, but the rigid sporty rear end will make a tried and true trail feel new again. 
It's also worth noting who this bike is not for, and that is the Specialist. Like I've said a million times in this video, this is a jack of all trades bike. It's good at a lot of things, but great at nothing. For riders looking for the ultimate playful dirt jump feeling trail bike, I'd recommend checking out the RSD Middle Child or the Ragley Marley. And riders looking for a more full-fledged enduro race hardtail would probably be better off with a bike like the Rocky Mountain Growler or the On One Hello Dave. But if you're looking for a value-packed hardtail that could kick the crap out of a lot of full suspension bikes that cost two to three times as much in a lot of different areas, then I don't think you're gonna have too many complaints with the San Quentin 3. Overall, I was very impressed with the 29-inch version of the Marin San Quentin. And I think these bigger wheels are gonna be a better option for most riders, upping its trail bike capabilities without detracting from the fun that this bike is on dirt jumps and pump tracks. At just $1,800, this San Quentin 3 is a killer value, but riders looking to spend even less can also opt for the San Quentin 2, which lists for just $1,399. If you have any more questions about this bike, then you can go ahead and leave those down there in the comments, and I'll be sure to answer those. While you're down there, if you're new to the channel and have not subscribed to 99 Spokes yet, I'd appreciate it if you do so. And lastly, remember that bikes are for everyone. Have fun out there.